What is going on guys welcome back in this video today we're going to learn about garbage collection in python how it works and what we can do to potentially speed up our code so let us get right into it All right, so we're going to discuss garbage collection in this video today, what the basic idea behind it is, how it works, how it's implemented in Python, what the basic mechanism is behind it. And we're going to take a look at what we can do manually when it comes to garbage collection to maybe speed up our code and our programs. But before we get into any of the coding, I would like to briefly explain to you on a theoretical level what is happening behind the scenes when it comes to garbage collection, what reference counting is in Python. And I don't want to go too deep into the technical details. I want to keep it uh, concise and simple here. But before we get into any of the concrete coding and concrete experimentation with Python, I want to just explain briefly what's happening uh, in the background. And for this, I have my paint opened up. And the idea of reference counting is quite simple. Now, Python collects the garbage based on reference counting. The idea of reference counting is I have some object here, for example, object A, and this object A can be referenced by other objects. A very simple example is let's say I have an object B and B is a list and a list contains many elements. A could be part of B. So actually, this would mean B is referencing A. And what Python does is for each object, it has something called a reference count. So how many references are there to this object A? And you could say now that this adds one reference, and maybe I have some object C, this could now be a class, for example, and one attribute of the class, for example, C dot name, could be pointing to A as well. And that would also be plus one when it comes to reference counting. The idea now is that when an object is completely unreachable, we can completely destroy it and we don't need it anymore. So the idea is if this connection does no longer exist, this connection does no longer exist, and there's no way to reach A in any way, and we delete A, then basically the garbage collector can destroy A without any problems. That's now the basic explanation without too much technical detail here. Now, the problem is that sometimes we can have uh, or not necessarily a problem. But the thing is, sometimes we can have cyclical references. So we can have something like a link one, pointing to a link two, pointing to a link three, and then link three points maybe to l one again, and then I have some external object a pointing to l one. Now I can delete l three, I can delete l two, and I can delete l one. However, these object will still remain in uh, the memory, they will still remain available. Why? Because there is a path since l one will not be deleted because the l one reference count is at least one a is pointing to l one. Uh, and because l one is not going to be deleted from a I will be able to reach l three because from a I can reach l one from l one I can reach l two. And from l two I can reach l three as long as this path still exists. I cannot really destroy these objects, I can delete in Python the variable l3, l2, l1, but I cannot really destroy the objects because they are necessary, I can still reach them. Whereas if I have something else here, and this is all from the documentation from the developer guide, if you have um, l4, link four pointing to itself, and then you delete l4, you can completely destroy it because there's nothing pointing to l4. The basic idea is now garbage collection takes care of stuff like this, it analyzes which objects are unreachable, and which objects are still reachable, and all the unreachable objects are going to be destroyed so that we don't waste any memory. That's the basic idea of garbage collection. I hope this was not too complicated. The important thing to understand now is that we work with three so called generations. So when it comes to garbage collection in Python, we have three generations, generation zero, generation one, generation two. Now, every time you allocate space for an object, and every time an object is created, it's basically belonging to g zero to generation zero. So I can have an object A an object B an object C and so on. And after a certain threshold of allocations, uh, the garbage collector is going to come in and analyze which of these objects are still reachable and which of them are not. So maybe it realizes A is still there. B is still reachable, but C is completely useless, it's unreachable, we can destroy it. So this is one iteration or one cycle of garbage collection. So C would be destroyed, A and B are not destroyed, they persist. And because of that, they're moved to generation one. So now we have A and B in generation one, these are objects. 
Um, and the idea is why do we move them to generation one out of generation zero? The idea is that there is an assumption that most objects have a very short lifespan, but those that persist long or already for quite a long time are more likely to persist even longer, which means that since A and B are still around after this cycle, uh, we expect them to be around for even longer. So we don't have to check them all the time. We're going to check them less often than all the objects in G0. So then maybe we generate some new objects or we allocate some space for new objects, D, E, F, and so on after a certain threshold is um, again uh, reached. What we do again is we uh, check which are reachable. Maybe these two are no longer reachable. D is moved to generation one. Now, after we do this 10 times, this is those are now the default values. Uh, after you do this 10 times, a certain threshold is reached for generation one. And then we go into generation one and the garbage collector analyzes which of these objects are still around. So A, B, D, are all of these still reachable? Maybe we see, okay, no, B is no longer reachable, but A and D are still around. And after these 10 loops of generation zero garbage collection, we can then move A and D to generation two, which is going to be checked even less often. It's going to be checked after 10 times garbage collection in generation one. Um, I hope this is not too confusing. The basic idea is that for each of these generations, you have thresholds. For the first generation, you have a threshold saying after 700 allocations, this is now the default value in Python, after 700 allocations, perform garbage collection, analyze which of these objects are reachable, which of these objects are no longer reachable, and destroy all the unreachable objects. When you persist this garbage collection, you're moved to generation one. When you persist this 10 times, so after 10 times, generation one is garbage, uh, garbage collected. This is now the threshold here. So after 10 times garbage collection in generation zero, a garbage collection is performed for generation one. If you persist here as well, you're moved to generation two. And um, that is this uh, threshold here. So when you, when you basically do 10 times garbage collection in generation one, you do it once in generation two. That's the basic idea. All right, now let us go ahead and play around with these concepts in Python directly. For this, we're going to open up an interactive Python shell by either typing Python or Python 3 into the terminal, into the command line. And then we're going to import the two packages, sys and gc, which stands for garbage collection. Both are core Python packages, no need to install anything. And one function provided by the sys package is the function get ref count. And this basically tells us how many references are there for a specific object or to a specific object. So for example, if I say a equals hello world, and then I run sys get ref count on a, you can see we have two references here. And if I now say my list is an empty list, and I say my list dot append a, now my list is referencing a and when I run this, I can see I have one more reference. I can also see where the reference is coming from by running GC get referrers. And I can type a here and you can see my list is uh, part of it. So that is also something that you can explore here. Now, the interesting thing here is that you can call the function GC get thresholds to see what the current uh, thresholds are 700 10, 10, what I just explained in my paint. And you can also change these. So you can cause garbage collection to happen more often or less often. So of course, garbage collection takes some time. And if you run it less often, you can speed up your code in certain circumstances, not always, but we can set the threshold to something else by just saying, uh, for example, 1000, 20, 30, or something like this. And then when I run this, you can see those are now the new values. I can also see what the current state is. So GC get count will tell me what the current state is. We have 415 allocations. We have 10 times uh, generation one garbage collection and one time generation two garbage collection already having uh, or already have happened uh, in the past. And if you want to see when garbage collection is happening, you can enable the so-called debug mode. So you can say GC set debug true. And this will basically 
uh, show you a message every time a garbage collection is performed, and it will tell you exactly when it's happening and how it's happening. Now for this, we're going to move away from the interactive shell into an actual script. Here, we're going to start again by importing GC and by importing sys. And then we're going to say GC set debug to true so that we can see what's happening. And I'm going to use now the example that I showed you in my paint, which is from the dev guide of Python. And this is a class link. And this class link has a constructor which takes a parameter next link. And it also takes a value in my case. Now this is a little bit modified. It's not the exact example from the uh, dev guide. But the idea is that you have self next link being equal to next link and self value being equal to value. And then we're going to have a representation dunder method, which just returns the value so that we just get a string instead of this Python main object at certain address. Um, so that is our class. And what we're going to do now is we're going to um, what we're going to do is we're going to cause garbage collection to happen quite often, first of all, so that we can see the output. And second of all, so that we can see that this can actually speed up the process. If you do garbage collection less often. So this is a very artificially crafted example. But there are also examples that are actual use cases, not just artificially crafted examples, where reducing the amount of garbage collection checks that you do is going to speed up your code. So what we're going to do here is we're going to create one link, which is going to be our uh, main link. So we're going to say link, it will have no link that it's pointing to and it's going to have the value main link. And then we're going to say now that we want to have my list, empty list. And we want to say for I in range, and let's pick a large number, which one did I pick here? 5 million. What we're going to do is we're just going to create a new link L temp. And this L temp is going to be a link pointing to the main link. And it's going to have a value L. And it's going to be added to my list. So we create quite a lot of references here, my list append L temp. And what we're going to do here as well as we're going to import the Python package time and we're going to measure how long this takes. So time or actually start is equal to time perf counter and is equal to time perf counter and then print and minus start to see how long it takes with the default settings. Uh, so we have this now I can run this. And first of all, what you can see here, maybe we can stop this, I can then disable it to show you. Uh, but you can see now how the garbage collection is being done. You can see here, garbage collection is happening all the time. Um, and it's also being locked. Now you can also see that it happens in different generations. So it happens in 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. So after 10 generations of zero, it happens uh, in generation one, after 10 times generation one, it happens in generation two. So you can analyze this whole process here, if you set debug to true, but of course, this is going to uh, show a very verbose output. If we disable that, we're just going to get our result, which is going to be 4.31 seconds, I can run this again, to see that this is roughly how long it takes in this case, uh, with all the garbage collection being done. Now we can go ahead and we can change the thresholds, I can go and say here, GC set threshold, and I can say instead of doing it for 700 allocations, do it for 20,000 allocations, every 20,000 allocations check uh, for or do garbage collection. Uh, and for generation one, do it only for, uh, you know, every 50 times, or for generation two, do it every 100 times. So if I run this now, you will see that this takes much less time. And I can also take this to an extreme by saying GC disable, this disables garbage collection completely basically says don't do any garbage collection at all. And then you're going to see that this runs even faster. Now what you can also do maybe for this, we're going to use the interactive shell again. Uh, what you can also do is you can 
uh, collect the garbage manually to see what happens. So you can say import GC, we can say GC set debug true. And now I can say GC get count. And what I can do is I can say GC collect and I can pass generation collect generation zero. And you can see I get this message now collecting generation zero. And you can see that the count for generation one increased as well. Uh, now when I collect um, generation two, you can see it collects everything. So it resets everything. Um, so yeah, collecting generation two also collects everything else, or basically uh, resets everything to the beginning. So that is also something that you can do, you can disable, you can enable, of course, so you can also disable for a certain section. So one thing is, for example, if you have some database access, which uh, causes a lot of uh, references to be created, but you don't really have much or you don't really have many unreachable um, objects, so you don't want to really do garbage collection too much, you can say GC disable, then some code and then GC enable afterwards again. And then maybe you can do some GC collect manually to catch up or something. Uh, that is something that can in certain circumstances in certain situations speed up your code massively. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.